Okay, now I will uh, connect the lab amateur complex T and the representative needs more directly. So the lab amateur complex T explains the representative needs as follow. So this is lemma 26.2 in our textbook. The expectation of representativeness with respect to the random samples of our training data point which is um, upper bounded by two times expected of Adamacha complexity. So how to show this? Uh, this is very simple. Let's consider another independent samples training data point S prime, which consists of M IID data point from the same data generation process D. From the definition, the test error LDF is equal to expectation with respect to S prime L S prime F. Therefore, the spimum of LDF minus LSF, the test error minus training error, is equal to supimum of expectation with respect to S prime, LS prime F minus LSF, because the expectation of LS prime F is equal to this part is equal to LDF. And when you move the supimum to the inside of expectation, we have this inequality sign. Okay, so this is very easy to check. So fly, please try this by yourself. This is very simple in many material in Google. So this very simple trick, we uh, basically have this inequality. Right? And using this inequality by taking expectation over S, we have uh, this inequality, which comes from the previous slide, right? And from the definition of LS prime and LSF, this is equal to one over M because we have M data point times expectation over S and S prime from D distribution, supimum, the extreme case of function F, over sum I from I1 to M, FGI prime minus FGI. So FGI prime comes from S prime, FGI comes from S. But here, this is very important thing because S and S prime are IID samples Essentially, it is absolutely fine. You change the, the location of FGI prime and FGI. So in the, in the sense of expectation, this is equal to FGI minus FGI prime because GI and GI prime are IID and we take expectation. Okay, so using this technique, you can multiply minus one or plus one as you want. That does not change the expectation. So we can introduce sigma vector comes from minus one and plus one uh, vector. And you multiply sigma i to each element. Okay, so sigma i comes from minus one plus one m dimensional vector. And that is absolutely fine. So, <clears throat> because you have a supimum, when you split this part into uh, sigma i times fzi prime and minus sigma i fzi, we have this inequality sign. And from the definition of rather much a complex T, this is essentially equal to m times expectation over s rather much a complex t and this is also m times expectation of rather much a complex t okay again since s prime and s are 
IID samples, we can simply write down this is equal to 2m times expectation of Lagrange complexity. Okay, so from 1 and 2, we have this. Right. So the Lagrange complexity can explain the generalization error. So for any h prime, h star, in our hypothesis class, we have this Ex expectation over samples, training samples, the test error of empirical risk minimization rule minus the test error of any hypothesis H prime is always upper bounded by two times expectation over S Radamacha complexity. Why this is true? From the definition, the test error of H prime is equal to expectation over S, the training error of H prime. And from the definition of empirical risk minimization rule, uh, this is always bigger than the training error of empirical risk minimization because empirical minimization uh, means we pick the hypothesis having the least empirical uh, training error. So we have this inequality, which means LD ERM H minus LD H prime H star expectation of S. This is upper bounded by expectation of S. LD, ERM, hypothesis, minus, LS, ERM, hypothesis, and this is exactly the two times expectation of her as not that much complexity. So we have this first result. And the second result just comes from the Markov inequality. So the second result, what, why we obtain the second result? Because in the first result, all, everything is expectation of S. So in reality, what we really want to do is we want to abounding the training error and test error for one instance, for one uh, sample training data point. And this is the result. With probability n is 1 minus delta, we want to guarantee something for the generalization gap. And this is the result. From the expectation result, when we apply the Markov inequality, Markov inequality is, is very simple but powerful. Using the Markov inequality, we can conclude this. 1 over delta times expectation can give us 1 minus delta confidence and this um, upper bound. Okay? That's it. So let's go one step further. Assume that for all uh, data points Z and hypothesis H, we have that the bounded loss value. Okay? For instance, for the classification task, the loss can be 0 or 1 if uh, the predicted value is matched with uh, the true label, then the loss is equal to 0. But if our classification is long, then the loss value is 1. And for the bounded um, label and the regression case, because the up label is always bounded, uh, the L2 error norm or everything always bounded by something by the the boundary of the output label so the bounded loss value for one single instance is not strong assumption i guess so that is a very common cases okay so crm 6 
26.5 explain how can we get more um, tight bound for the case we have bounded rows value for each instance. These three result is um, step by step uh, process. We uh, as the number increase, we get more um, strong result. See, so the first result is this. With probability n is one month delta for all hypothesis h, we have this generalization gap. Our generalization gap is always upper bounded by two times expectation of Radamach complex T uh, plus C, the, the bounded uh, value C, times Q root, two times log. 2 over delta, delta is the confidence level over m, m is the number of training sample. This is the first result. So when we have a small Adamant complex on average, then we can say that our uh, generalization gap is um, bounded by 2 times the expected Adamant complexity plus some value which is proportional to square to 1 over training sample size and which is also proportional to the the loss value scale c okay and we can say more instance specific um generalization gap so the um generalization gap is bounded by two times Nada much of complexity for the uh, specific training samples S plus three times the low scale C times square root two times log four over delta. Delta is the confidence level over the training sample size M. And from this, so this is for a specific hypothesis age okay so this results tell us the difference between test error of specific hypothesis age minus training loss of specific hypothesis age but the last result is the most powerful result and what really want to obtain um, that explain the generalization gap when we find the empirical risk minimization from our training sample S, then the true test error of the empirical risk minimization rule is has at most this amount of more rows compared to the true best hypothesis the hypothesis h star that really minimize the test error and the gap is bounded by two times rather much complexity plus four times the scale of loss square root two times log a over delta over m okay so how can we show this very simple uh, first note that the representativeness is a function of random variable our training sample has so this is kind of random variable the representativeness and the random source comes from the random generation process of training sample s and since the rows value is bounded for each instance from the assumption so representativeness fs has the bounded differences condition right so this is function of random variables g1 through gm and when you change any random variable of here the difference of a representativeness is bounded by c from the definition okay so from MacDiamid inequality, so for the bounded difference property, uh, when we have bounded difference condition, we can apply MacDiamid inequality. 
Okay, we we have discussed what is Mechtia Medina Kulti at week two. So maybe we you know what is Mechtia Medina Kulti. So we can apply the Mechtia Medina Kulti for this case. And we have that with property n is 1 minus delta this result. And the, this random variable minus expected of the random variable is upper bounded by this. That is just a concentration inequality result. And the minus expectation can move to this. So the representativeness of our hypothesis class for the given training sample S is upper bounded by the expected representativeness plus this um, concentration um, difference bound. Okay. So using lemma 26.2, the first inequality of the theorem followed from the definition of representativeness of function class and training data point S. That is the first result. For the second result, again, the um, Nadamacha complexity is a function of random variables. Again, the random source comes from the um, training data point because we randomly generated generate the training data point z1 through zm and the Radamacha complexity is a function of these random variables this is again a function and since we have bounded difference property for the loss function the Radamacha complexity also has the bounded difference property Again, we can apply Mechtiam inequality for the difference between Radamacha complexity and the expectation of Radamacha complexity. And using that result, using that result, uh, we can uh, show the second result of this uh, theorem. So from the first uh, inequality, with property n is 1 minus delta over 2. Why we have to consider delta over 2? Because for this second result, we have to apply two Radamacha complexity. The first Radamacha complexity is uh, uh, two Mechtiamid inequality. The first Mechtiamid inequality for the bounding between representativeness minus expected representativeness. And we also have to apply the Mechtiam inequality for this Radamacha complexity minus expected Radamacha complexity. And then we need to apply union bound. So the representativeness also well concentrated around the expected of representativeness. And at the same time, the Radamacha complexity is very concentrated around the expected of Radamacha complexity. So we need to have with probability at least 1 minus delta over 2, representativeness is upper bounded by 2 times Radamacha complexity plus this constant, which comes from this. And also with property n is 1 minus delta over 2, 2 times expected Radamacha complexity is upper bounded by 2 times Radamacha complexity plus our concentration result. Okay, so then make the second result using union bound. And the last inequality, the last result of this theorem. Um, it's a little bit more tricky, but still very easy. We denote by HS uh, is it equal to ERM output to save our space. Okay, then note that the difference between training error, a uh, test error of HS minus test error of true best hypothesis H star is equal to this. Uh, that this just um, minus and plus same thing, minus and plus same thing. Okay, but here 
important thing is since HS is the empirical risk minimization result, and this is training error, LSHS always less than LSH star. So this value always negative. So when you erase this, we have this inequality sign. Okay, so now we want to minimize this part and this part. Again, using union bound, we will conclude this last part. So we want to make a width probability 1 minus delta over 2 result for this and width probability 1 minus delta over 2 result for this. Then by union bound with probability 1 minus delta, we can simply combine the two results. So we first bound the test error of empirical risk minimization output minus the training error of HS. Okay. And this essentially comes from the second result. Okay, from the second result we have this. And this part, we use H star, and H star does not depend on the training sample S. So there is no randomness. H star is given to us and is fixed for given distribution D. That does not depend on S. Okay, so we can apply Hefting's inequality to bound this. So with probability n is 1 minus delta over 2, we have this. So by combining these two, we can conclude this theorem.